Hey guys, VBad here with another V plays, and we're taking out the BVP 210, another recent repurchase of mine. Uh, I do remember really liking all of the BV BVP aircraft. So, BVP 210, 212, the 215 was a learned love, and then there's also the 203, which is going to be the premium heavy aircraft, and I do like all of them. Uh, this one, though, was the introduction to this airframe and the option to be carrying these air to air rockets. So this can be a great platform for any of you guys that need to get Rocketeer kills, which are on the list of missions needed for unlocking the Vampire, if I'm not mistaken. If not, then at the very least, I know that it's typically available for or required for some of the other missions that are out there for special event aircraft. Now, we only got two 20 millimeter cannons, but as you can see... If you're using them effectively, they can be quite devastating and able to tear apart aircraft at range. Just got to keep an eye on the heat, but that's true for any of the aircraft that we've ever reviewed. Keep those guns cool. Keep them accurate. There we go. Now, I made a critical error here. I did not F2 our mine, but the good news is we looks like we got some allies over there helping out. Uh, I am going to come over here. I'm going to request some assistance from my buddies. The enemy does have an IL-20 specialized, so that's going to be an issue for us. I believe this is a human-controlled aircraft right here. Using our pneumatic assist here for getting the kill to... Keep this zone contested. We don't have a lot of oomph on this aircraft. Oh, it looks like the IL-20 actually crashed. There we go. Got a Rocketeer from the stern. I took a little bit of the blast on that one since we were a little bit close. But delaying the enemy is really what we were here to do. So let's go back over here. The enemy's coincidentally also delaying us. So we need to put some effort into that area. There is a human controlled aircraft right there. In the Mustang. Oh, we just lost our engine. That's going to be a bit of a bummer right here because it turns out that engines are pretty important. Oh, looks like we killed each other over the zone. But this goes back to the calculation we talked about earlier, because that guy definitely got into a ram situation with me. But he can only get back 40 capture points from defending against an aircraft in a zone he already controls, while I can get 60 for killing a player aircraft in a zone uh, while I'm trying to capture it. So this goes back to the beginner's guide. Heh. <laughs> He just proved, uh, just proved the point, so we could thank him for that if we wanted. Uh, let's get up here and go after that airframe. We really would like to pick up one of these sites. Oh, it looks like we got him. Nice. What's next? I didn't even look at the list here. Uh, P-47 quit because we killed him. That's not really fair, is it? The roll rate on this thing is absolutely fantastic. Looks like we managed to pick up a mine before they did. There we go, got him that time. Here we go, another Rocketeer.
We're getting up above our typical altitude regime here, but we are running the operated engine, which allows you to be able to get aircraft up to surprising altitudes just because of the engine power that's available. Here, go ahead and dab that F2 key there. Is that the human? No, it isn't. Doesn't mean they're not dangerous, just not a priority at this very moment. What is that? Faka Wolf? Yeah. Too high, Faka Wolf. Oh no. No. Oh, they just came back too. That sucks. That sucks. If I would have waited like a half second, could have done something cheeky there. Alright, we're going to reload these. He left the zone, so he stopped getting chased by the defense aircraft. Put a good amount of hurt into him. Oh, shoot. Rudder is not nearly as responsive on this platform. Good on you, man. All right, our rockets are back. Oh, did we nick him? I think we did, we got his engine. We don't have good rudder authority, we've already talked about this. There we go, we picked him up right as squall line it. That was not intentional, but it worked. Is this a Hornet? Yes, it is. Okay. Not as threatening as a 262. Doesn't mean it isn't dangerous. There is a 262. Don't let anybody catch you by surprise. I'm still looking at the mini-map. He just gave us the zone. Whew. Managed to pick up grade two. Oh, come on. I would love to get the kill. Not going to be able to. We'll just tickle away a few extra points there. And we managed to pick up Wing Legend just from that little extra tick at the end. So we'll throw up a GG here. Unfortunately for them, they lost the P-47 early. And I'm not sure what happened with the IL-20 if he lost his tail or something. But we ended up losing him over the mine, which allowed us to be able to stall their capture during this battle. Which is exactly the way that I usually like to run this. I talked about it during my beginner's guide part six, my tactics specifically on this map and that arrangement. And what I failed to do is I didn't F2 the mine, but I was lucky that all of my bombers went to my nearest mine. While I took a hard right, went after the garrison and started working around the perimeter and heading to their mine to do the interrupt, which is what we managed to do against the P-47 as well as against well, I'd say against the IL-20, but again, we know that he crashed during that engagement. Uh, we only killed 11 aircraft, but we managed to rake in a decent amount of personal points, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that we get a lot of points for defending or killing aircraft while defending a site. So we managed to do that to eight or five different aircraft out of uh, potential eight here for being able to get the full mark for this one, but we did pick up grade two for multi-roll. Uh, and even though this isn't an air to ground multi role a traditional one, uh, it does get the benefits of its kind of mission set up here. Uh, and on top of that, we managed to cause quite a bit of damage. Uh, we're talking about 4,883, which is pretty decent for this T-34 
Rocketeer, and then we actually got a couple of Rocketeers there in that battle, which is a pretty normal occurrence in this airframe. Now, we are running the skill Expert Rocketeer. Now, it says significantly increases the chance of getting a direct hit with rockets. Well, these are actually air-to-air -air rockets, and they launch in these clusters. And if we can take a look, I think it'll actually tell us the cluster size and the upgrade section. So the R4Ms, same ones you get on the 262, same thing, same ones you get on the 212. Not the same ones you get on the 215 at tier 10 though. The ones at tier 10 actually do 200 damage each. But these are launching in three clusters of eight. Yeah, uh, three times eight is 24, right? So three clusters of eight. So when you launch those eight rockets and they kind of scatter out there throughout the sky, uh, they are actually going to be able to range out to nearly 4,500 feet. Uh, so well over a thousand meters and we'll have the ability to airburst once an aircraft, and this is the way I understood it, once an aircraft gets within the blast radius, they'll essentially operate off of a proxy fuse which is why you have an increased chance of hitting a target because you just need to be within the blast radius. I haven't really tested that too much, but I can tell you that with the Rocketeer skill, I find myself getting way more uh, detonations of the air-to-air -air rockets when they are on target with the aircraft. Um, with that said, would a rocket with a bigger blast radius have a higher chance of being able to hit an aircraft like if i launched a tiny tim would it be able to just detonate right near a bunch of aircraft i don't know again i haven't tested it but i'd be interested to hear if anybody has anything to say in the comments uh this airframe is an interesting grind you actually start with two mark 108s and then you upgrade to 20 millimeter cannons now the real strength here is going to come in the form of the increase in range and the increase of rate of fire and while the damage per second is only going to be 400 uh that's pretty good for this tier especially with the consistency and the relative accuracy they don't seem to bloom real bad when they get a little bit overheated again i still try to keep them from getting there but you're also looking at a very small aircraft so if i were to pull up the american tier 9 fighter as well oh. take a look at the goblin real quick as we swap between the two here you're actually looking at a nearly the same size airframe here when it comes to this aircraft so oh there they are they're right next to each other it's a little single seater concept right so while it's not as small as a goblin it is going to be a much smaller hitbox than most aircraft out there uh, it does not have good yaw authority. So for those of you who have been experimenting with switching your rudder controls to E and Q, uh, like I've kind of recommended from time to time, you're going to find that this thing just doesn't do it. And at one point we were making a turn, we were trying to come back around on, I believe it was the 265, we just did not have the rudder authority and I almost ate it trying to make a turn. Anyways... This is the BVP-210, and I think once you guys get this aircraft, you'll really struggle with the idea of selling it because it is a beautiful airframe and it flies very, very well. But bear in mind that the 212 is just more of the same, and it also gets the same guns, but you get an additional one, so you're actually getting a 33.3% um, increase in the overall forward firing armament. And you're also getting... Um, the same air to air rockets are possibly air to ground rockets as well so actually i think the way that that math would work out is you'd actually consider it a 50 percent increase since it's plus half of the gun power you currently had on the bvp 212 anyways i digress hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you enjoyed the battle even more importantly and have fun flying out there guys and maybe i'll see you guys in a bvp 210 someday